Hello there. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I run the Integrated Materials Design Centre at UNSW Sydney. Uh, you'll see that the title of my, my talk today as a part of the Pawsey Civic Computing Centre Roadshow is uh, Computational Materials Design, The Power and the Passion. So I think I must have been in a dramatic mood when I was thinking of a title for this talk. Um, basically, the power refers to the power of the compute engines, which the Pawsey Supercomputing Center uh, and the in uh, WA and the NCI in Canberra provide uh, for the Australian scientists. And then the passion comes from the scientists themselves who uh, perceive, particularly when you're in my game, as a uh, computational materials design specialist, uh, who perceive the amazing and truly remarkable possibilities that are opening up now with, uh, through coupling the power of the computing uh, with the power of the software for atomistic scale simulations. So that's in a sense the theme of the talk today and we're looking at drug delivery essentially. So in drug delivery basically you need uh, to have some carrier, carrier system, carrier uh, maybe a polymer, it may be a nanoparticle, which will grab onto your drug uh, protect and shield it uh, from degradation and ultimately deliver it to the cells where it needs to get into. Okay? And so in our simulations, we look at the interaction specifically between the carrier species and the drug itself to try to understand about the mechanism uh, of the binding and therefore learn better how to design the carrier to make it more efficient. Because the greater the efficiency, the lower is the payload, and the lower is the payload that's needed to get an effect, then you can reduce side effects for patients. So it's a very important um, um, topic. So this is a very uh, simple uh, um, summary slide, essentially representing the fact that there are lots and lots of good reasons why we want to be able to get drugs and genes into cells, uh, for reasons that I've just kind of described to you. Um, it's important for gene therapy, uh, for plant uh, uh, biotechnology, um, for manufacture of proteins and drugs. Uh, and for treatment of patients, uh, ongoing treatment. And uh, the general mechanism for this process uh, is essentially that the, the complex of the carrier system and the drug nestles up to the cell membrane, it gets absorbed in through endocytosis and then released ultimately inside the cytoplasm of the cell uh, through endosomal breakdown. That's the, the traditional and most well understood mechanism perhaps we should say. In these simulations, we, uh, as I said, just look at the complex between the carrier and the drug. That's where we start. Um, there are many different ways of trying to achieve this delivery of drugs and genes to cells. Uh, we are looking at um, polymers and dendromers, uh, uh, complexes between uh, the gene or the drug and, and the carrier in this particular part of the story. So this is a study that we undertook with um, uh, Martina Stencil here at UNSW uh, in Sydney. And uh, Martina is uh, designing um, bespoke polymeric vectors for uh, delivering different types of drugs. And in this particular case, the model drug she's using is a protein, it's lysozyme, egg white lysozyme. And she designs a, a protein, which as you see uh, in the a little a picture of the protein in, in the MD simulation on the, in the top left, and then a schematic of the structure down on the bottom corner there. Uh, and so this particular one, the, the lysozyme is positively charged uh, under ambient conditions in solution. And so she designs the polymer so that one part of it, it's, it's a block copolymer, one part of it is negatively charged under uh, pH 7, and the other part of it is, uh, um, is hydrophilic, basically so you can get nice uh, uh, complexes in water between the carrier and the drug. So the idea is that the negative part of the polymer will bind to the positively charged uh, protein, and then when it gets inside the cell, pH drops down to around four and a half in the late endosomal stage. And at that point, the polymer should be, should be titrated, it goes neutral, and hopefully they separate and you release the drug to do its thing inside the cell. Um, that, that, that's the, the experimental rationale, I guess we should say. So uh, Sergio De Luca and my team uh, started out running atomistic simulations of this large polymer with a fairly decent sized protein in order to try and understand something about the mechanism of interaction uh, because our experimental colleagues just don't know essentially uh, in details at the atomic scale of how it works. And so you see here a sequence of shots where Sergio has run heroic long-time molecular dynamics simulations 
uh, well, relatively long time. Um, I should say about 100 nanoseconds, uh, three or four times over. And so you see the picture on the uh, left there is the blue lysozyme protein, and the polymer is green where it's charged and red uh, where it's neutral, the hydrophilic part. So you see that the green part is nestling up towards the, the, the blue protein. And you run that for 100 nanoseconds and you see the second frame, it's getting even closer, nestling up really tight and cozy with the, with the protein, as you would expect. Uh, what Sergio then does is he, is he simulates a reduction of the pH by basically protonating and therefore neutralizing a, sig a significant portion of the uh, uh, polymer. And so he then runs another 130 nanoseconds at four, pH 4.5 and it still sticks. And so finally, Sergio said, well, look, I'll just neutralize the whole polymer, as, as, which is really simulating a pH more like three, and ran that for another 130 nanoseconds. Still, they stick together. They don't separate. And this was kind of puzzling for us because um, uh, Martina and her, and her group had been doing delivery studies on this uh, system, and they found that once it gets into a cell, it does release. Um, and so we ask ourselves, what's the difference between what we did and what they did? Well, our simulation is in water. It's in, a, it's in a periodic cell in water. And we say it sticks, it doesn't release at pH 4.5. What then happened is that uh, Marlise asked her, her, uh, um, her postdoc, Charles, to uh, rerun the experiment uh, in water this time, not uh, delivering into a cell, okay? So four days later, Charles came back with a result. He said, absolutely, you guys are right. It doesn't release. He can see this from his confocal microscopy uh, when you put it in water. So this gave us a lot of confidence that our simulations are not pie in the sky. Actually, they're quite robust and they do give meaningful results. But you would ask yourself, look, you, you ran simulations all up, given uptime and downtime and so forth. It took about 12 months to get that done. And then in four days' time, they run an experiment to verify it. Well, what's the point of this, all those simulations? The point is insight, because as soon as you start to see mechanism of interaction and you start to see certain things happening or not happening, it triggers your thinking about design. Um, and this led us to design new uh, potential carrier particles based on weak base and weak acid uh, uh, functionalities, two different designs you see here. One is a block copolymer where one side has weak acid groups, the other side has weak base groups. And the, the lower figure is an alternative where you, you design into a monomer both weak acid and weak base groups um, and then just make a, a, a short strand polymer from that particular monomer. Two different ways to do it. The idea here now is that you go from negative charge at ambient pH 7, when you drop down to pH 4.5, the whole thing goes positive. And so it should just blow apart from the positively charged protein drug and get really more efficient release. So um, interesting possibilities. We ran simulations there and you see some profiles here which show that indeed uh, as you simulate that in time, once you s switch the pH and in the top left hand corner that happens around 20 nanoseconds, these are short systems and preliminary uh, simulations we did, but it really blows apart. Once that, once that, once that uh, carrier polymer turns positive, it blows away from the lysozyme uh, from the positively charged drug. Uh, and um, looks very promising, okay? So going on a little further, we can probe further with quantum chemistry um, and understand more about whether these things could work or not. And so here the title is Refining Design Ahead of Synthesis, because by the way, making these things takes anything from four to six months, uh, first time around, right, and then trying it out. So we can run ahead with our simulations and look for potential pitfalls, and we found one here. When we looked more carefully, if you look at the bottom one, the bottom uh, uh, system there where we co-designed the weak acid carboxylate group and the imidazole group into the monomer, we thought, well, maybe that does the same thing. Um, but actually it doesn't. Because if you look at it more carefully, this simply goes sphitter ionic. The acid group donates its proton to the base group and stabilizes a sphitter ionic plus minus charge system all the way from pH 4 to pH 11. So you will not see charge switching as a function of pH in that system. And we were able to tell Martina, look, don't try and do that one, you're wasting your time. Go for the other, the block copolymer. Uh, and so this is another way that the simulations can accelerate and advance. 
the process because we can save experimentalists wasting huge amounts of time uh, doing things that in the end can't work and we can see it from our calculations. Let me thank now finally uh, the team on the, on the soft matter simulation uh, side of our operations. Uh, Sergio De Luca uh, in the blue jersey there is the um, molecular dynamics specialist. Uh, Prasenjit Seal is the quantum chemist and they work as a wonderful team. Uh, and Martina Stenzel is our valued collaborator uh, across in the School of Chemistry at UNSW. And uh, my former collaborators up at University of Queensland, uh, Ouyang Defang and Harry Parekh. Uh, Ouyang is now faculty at Macau, University of Macau. So that brings us essentially to a close. I want to thank you for, thanks for your attention. I want to thank particularly the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre for the tremendous service they offer and the great capabilities that allow uh, great science to be done here in Australia. Thanks. <laughs>